So from here, same thing, element rotate clockwise, element rotate anti-clockwise. Okay. So over here, this is your point X. And over here, this is your point Y. Okay. So we know that stress Y is equal to zero. The other one is 18.75. So I'm going to draw a yellow line. 18. Point seven five. So eighteen point seven five. I'm just eyeballing this. Is somewhere out here. Six point five one nine is a shear. So six point five one nine. Okay. So I just again eyeballing this. So we know point X, the element will rotate what? If you look over here, right? Point X, the element will rotate in the what? Clockwise direction. So clockwise direction is here. And, element, and a point Y is in the anti-clockwise direction. So now you can draw your line. Okay, you can draw your line. Then again, the, the protocol is still the same, right? So we are still going to calculate. No doubt, we want to know the principal plane, but we also want to know what is the stresses acting on what? Okay. At the optimum orientation. So stress one. Or, so what do we calculate first? Radius of circle. No, no, radius of circle, center of circle. So center of circle is your stress average. So this will be equal to minus 18.775 times 10 to the power 3 plus 0 divided by 2. So 18.775 divided by 2, 9.3875. So minus 9.388 times 10 to the power 3 PSI. Okay, so that is our average stress. So this is our average stress point. So from here, we can calculate the radius of circle. So your tau max will be equal. So we label the center over here as point zero, point oh, sorry. So this will be equal to your shear stress, which is 6.519 plus by 9.388 squared. Okay, so 6.519. Plus by 9.388 squared. Square root of them is 11.429 times 10 to the power 3 psi. So from here, we can calculate our principal stress. So minus 9.388 times 10 to the power 3 plus or minus 11.429 times 10 to the power 3. So this will be equal to minus 9.388 plus 11.429 is equal to 2.041 positive times 10 to about 3 PSI. And then the next one, minus 20.817 times 10 to about 3 PSI. Okay, so now we can construct our circle. Okay, or if you have a compass, you can already construct your circle. Really. So 20.8, and then we have 11.429, 11.429, somewhere around here. And then we bring it down, and then we have 2.1. 
2.041 and then we have 11 point okay so this is our most circle so from here we want to calculate our 2 theta p right so tangent 2 theta p is equal to the shear which is equal to 6.519 divided by 9.388. So 2 theta p is equal to 6.519 divided by 9.388. Inverse tangent is 34 point eight degrees. And theta p is equal to 17.4 degrees. 17.4 degrees can be anticlockwise from X and from point Y. So this direction is very important. Now, how do we use this direction now? Okay. So now, once you have this information, I'm going to copy this chart for you to see. Right? So again, this is your X, this is your Y, and this is your Z. Now, we are going to view this now. This is your X, and this is your Y. Okay, so I'm going to draw, I'm going to sketch the shaft. So this is our element H. Okay, and we know this is our point Y. This is our point Y. Right, this is our y, this is our x. The first orientation is from y, we are going to rotate 34.8 which direction? Anti clockwise, yes or no? Right, so in real life, it's going to be what? Theta p. So the first lane direction that we're going to do, so if this is our zero. Our first lay direction that we're going to do is anti-clockwise 17.4 degrees. So we're going to lay over here. Anticlockwise, 17.4 degrees. Why? Because at this plane, the shear stress is equal to what? Zero. Your carbon fiber will not fail in what? Shear. Yes. Because on most circle, from point Y to the principal plane, where shear stress is zero, this angle is what? 34.8 of no circle. Agreed? Yes. So when it's 34.8 on no circle, you divide by two, divide by two because you bring it back to the what? Real world. That's why I've been teaching you all what? From the element to no circle, from no circle back to the what? The element. So from here, This is your first orientation. Your first orientation over here, right? Is then you will lay you will lay your carbon fiber in the orientation first. Then after that, what 
is a standard practice is they will do this. They will control C, control V, and then they will rotate by 90 degrees. This is the next major orientation. They will rotate from 30, 17.4, and the next one is 17.4 plus by 90. This is 10, 7.4 degrees. And here, shear stress is also equal to what? Zero. So this on very unique loading system. This will only work in the loading magnitude that we have. Are we clear? If your loading changes, so what is the standard practice? Okay. So what they tend to do most of the time, they will wind this five times, means go through the entire chart five times at this orientation. And then come back this orientation five times. Then after that, they do another what? Another five times in this orientation. They will wind this way and come back. Now they do wind, they do wind in a, another angle. So you can this is not really important, but you can take okay. After that, we are going to rotate this by two degrees. To cover other angles. Are we clear? Then they will wind two degrees, but not five times. If the two degrees over here, the two degrees over here, all right? Maybe this one, you only wind what? Two times. Are we clear? And then the process repeats itself so, until you cover the entire what? Or the entire angle. Yeah. Yes. 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 yes, the place where shear stress is equal to zero. Yes, that, that is the principle, that's not a principle plane at all. Yep. Because here, To go to the principal plane, Y has to rotate where? And you plot one. Yeah, it's the principal plane. The downwards, you are comparing with the previous problem, yes or no? Yes. The previous problem is different. The previous problem is I want to find Given this stress state, I want to find at this angle what is the what is the what is the loading condition? Different. Okay. Right. Now it is critical now where is the most easy to make mistake? Okay, why why this is so critical? Okay? Because mistake can be made. Just by one step. The step that we will make mistake is when? What if what if you got this wrong? I repeat again. What if you got this wrong? Yeah, if you got this wrong, I will show you what is the consequences. Okay, so I will, I will copy the whole thing and I'll paste down here. Okay, and I will put down here error. Now, if you were to get it wrong, so we know that this is the right answer. If you were to get it wrong, all the sudden, not all the sudden, now over here is your X error. And over here is your what? Y error. Okay, because you got the orientation wrong. Or I got the orientation wrong. So when you do this, what will happen? Because the wrong will say that this will rotate what direction? 
clockwise to Kijaki. So now, your orientation, because of the shear is wrong, your orientation, your first angle will look like this. 